Hi everyone and welcome to Eagle Creek Railroad. Uh, in this video I'm going to be DCC fitting this MP36PH from Kato. Um, I've got the Digitrax uh, DN163K4B drop-in decoder and that's it just there. I'm usually a TCS boy, I much prefer the TCS uh, decoders. I, I don't think there's any real reason, I just find them a little bit easier to work with and um, the CVs are slightly easier to customize and just overall running but I um, wasn't able to pick up a TCS one so I've gone with Digitrax um, so yeah join me in a minute so the first thing we need to do is get the shell off the chassis you now the usual trick of balancing the front of the loco on the edge of a jewelry case and just tapping it to drop the chassis out of the shell won't work with these because the buffers and the plows and the pilots they're actually chassis mounted not shell mounted so we've got to do the sort of the winkling of the shell off the body um it does come away quite easily but one thing i would say is don't fall into the trap of trying to pull it off via the fuel tanks um, because that's how damage can happen basically everything in black here that you can see underneath this white line is all clipped to the chassis and if you start pulling it it's just all going to come off and make a hell of a mess the easiest way I find is to actually hold the loco upside down like that and just prise it apart while using the weight of the chassis to drop drop it out of the shell. Um, that's the way I'm going to do it now. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so like I said, all I'm going to do is grab underneath there, prise the sides of the shell apart a little bit and just use the weight. And you should hear it come down like that. It's quite straightforward. The only thing I will say, be careful with these handrails because they're obviously part of the shell and they're obviously pinned in to the bottom of here as well you can just see the hole there on the steps so all i did is take a little cocktail stick and just literally push them apart either side there is a little bit of give on them you can see like that open them out a little bit otherwise you'll end up snapping them the next part of this is the DC board is just there, you can see. It's got this cover on the top, so we need to just gently lift that off like that. And that reveals then the DCC board, sorry, the DC board. Um, as you can see, it's very basic, very straightforward. You've got the motor contacts there and there, which just go down to the motor tabs. You've got a small resistor on there. And then the light then is on the front, just there. It's very basic DC board. Okay, so to take the DC board out, you can see it's just locked under the tabs there and there. But there is also just two small tabs there to stop it sliding anywhere. So the easiest way I found, just to get yourself a cocktail stick, you just run that under there gently, like that. What it does, it lifts the DC board up like that. So what you need to do then is just literally slide it forward Oh, and that's as easy as that. So there's the DC board. One thing I will need to do is take the motor clips off this one. Because as you can see on here, there are no motor clips. Those are the pads just there. So I will have to take these motor clips off. But they just slide on. They just literally push fit nice and easy. So they will be coming off. Okay, let's open up the bag with the decoder in. So first off, you've got some information. I'll just hold that there if you want to pause it and have a read. There's quite a lot of information here. It actually shows you exactly how to take things out. Okay, it's all there. Shows you how to take it out, how to put the new one in. It mentions about the motor tabs just there as well. Okay. And it's got details on how to adjust the CVs, customizing the decoder, um, well, voltage, start, middle, and max for different types of locos, switches, road switches, and mainline locos, momentum, three and four. Those are the ones I typically change for every loco. Um, basically what that is is the sort of the start speed and the stop speed so when you first apply power how long it takes to get up to the speed step you've selected 
and obviously then when you remove power and when you start slowing down that's the time it takes to go from the speed you're traveling to a stop so yeah cb3 and 4 are the ones i changed mainly it's a little bit of a bigger diagram there of the decoder Some other bits and pieces there. And there's obviously information about other items available from Digitracks. And then we've got the decoder in the bag. And there is your DCC decoder. There's a lot more going on there as you can see. When you compare it to the DC board, you can see the difference. Yeah. Right, I'm going to remove the motor tabs now off the DC board and apply them to the DCC board. Okay, as you can see, I've now put the motor tabs on the DCC board. Really easy to do. You just literally winkle them off the DC board and they just locate in the locating holes then on the DC board. Really straightforward. I like that they've included some kaftan tape on there. Because what can happen is the bottom of the decoder can short out against the chassis. So uh, I'm really happy that they've obviously thought about that. And they've already included a little bit of kaftan tape on there to minimise the chance of that happening. One thing I will show you while I've got the body off. In a previous video, I mentioned about the Kato lighting piping. And if you look inside the shell here, you'll see what I mean. So you can see there, you've got the red piping, obviously does... The backup lights are the tail lights when the loco is running in reverse so when the cab car is leading and you've also got the white piping then for the, the lighting boards the headlights and the marker lights okay so to fit the board what i do if you locate it in the back tabs first and let it drop like that so it should look like that to start with and all you got to do is push it down and literally slide it back there so it's lying flat there now you can see and just slide it back and that is it you can see the pickups just there and there either side because obviously it's a split chassis design so one half will be positive one half will be negative on dc or on DCC, one is one pole, one is the other. And that is it. And you can see the kaftan tape there stops the decoder from shorting out on the chassis. So that is literally why it's there. And that is it. That's secured. It's locked in place to the tabs on the front as well. You've got the motor tabs going down to feed either side of the motor. And that is it. That is now dcc fitted okay so i put the decoder cover back on it's important that you put this back on because it's got the two little tabs that push down either side of the motor and what that does then is make sure the the copper motor tabs are pushed up firmly against the motor contacts so yeah it's important you put that back on obviously there's no led on the back all the lighting comes out of the front and then it's just a simple case of putting the shell back on so slide it down. I like to locate the back first just to make sure that it's all going to fit tidy. Like that. And that is literally it. All I'm going to do now is relocate the grab irons um, into the holes. And that'll be done. I'll catch you in a minute. Okay, so just quickly, as you can see, I've relocated the grab irons into the holes on the steps both sides you just got to take a little bit of time take a little bit of care and that is that i like to use cocktail sticks for anything like that just because they don't mark the shell of the loco um yeah it's the way i find easiest to do it hi everyone uh, welcome to the layout um i've installed the loco on my ESU ECOS, I've run it in. Um, the running is fine, lovely and smooth, but I am a bit disappointed. Um, the lighting is well, really quite poor, in my opinion. 
Um, that's why I've got the cover off again. So there's the loco now. I'll just put the, the lights on for you. So as you can see there, you've got a nice bright white LED for the forward running. And then the red LED comes on then for running in reverse. And that all looks fine. I've got no problem with that. I'll just show you the forward LED again. You can see it's really nice and, you know, white and bright. But when I put the shell on, not only is it not brilliant, there's an awful lot of light in bleed. And I don't know if you can see there, the actual headlights are almost yellow. There's a horrible yellow tinge to um, to the running lights. Now, I've looked at a few videos online and various other bits and pieces. And nowhere can I see a yellow headlight on an MP36 PH. Some of them appear to have the older sort of incandescent, well not incandescent, but the older sort of off-white style lamps, um, pre-LED I'm guessing. But in no way are they as yellow as they appear on here. So I've got to be honest, I don't think it's the decoder, because again, you can see how white that is. I honestly think it's due to the piping inside. So for me, it's a bit of a letdown. Um, it's not prototypical. It just it just doesn't look right, you know. So I think this will be a candidate for maybe some sound fitting with a different decoder board and probably some reworking of the lighting. Um, um, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed, to be honest. I've had a look at the Digitrack CVs to see if I can change anything. It doesn't really mention brightness or colour, so I think it is what it is. But um, I think this is on Kato, to be honest. A little bit disappointed. A little bit disappointed. Well, I've refitted the cover now, and I've also turned the lights off because I don't think um, it was coming across just how yellow they looked. So, see what you think. And you can see there, the light bleed as well. I just think the white lights are way, way too yellow. And the light bleed from the tubing is terrible. If I go into reverse, you can see the light bleed. i got to be honest, I'm really quite disappointed. Um, I can't blame Digitrax because the board is exactly the same as the DC board with the way the LEDs are laid out. So... Yeah, I don't know what to say, really. I just... I just don't think it's very good. I don't think it's very good at all. So yeah, it's taking the shine off a new logo for me. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to leave you with a couple of quick running shots now. Um, I've just got it hooked up to the, uh, the bi-level coaches there, just to give a little run round. I need to tweak a few CVs. Um, I think the mid volts and start volts need adjusting. Um, the acceleration and deceleration I'm happy with, but yeah, I need to tweak just a couple more CVs. So yeah, please enjoy the yellow lighted MP36. Okay, well, thank you all for watching. Um, even in that shot there, you can see sort of the main headlights almost look white. But then the ditch lights and the number boards in the middle, um, they've almost got a yellow tinge to them. You know, it's the same LED. So I, I can only, you know, lay the finger of blame at uh, Kato's piping for the lighting. But yeah, it's something I need to look at because I'm really not happy with that. But 
Hey ho, uh, you win some, you lose some, I guess. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. If you have any comments, please drop them below. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. So keep well, stay safe, and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers all.